Hi, I'm Natasha Antonioni, lifestyle expert and realtor here in Austin, Texas. Today we have Leva Sather, designer and founder of Turnstyle Design. Yes. And we are talking about a focal point, a design focal point in a space. Very important component to a space. Um, it's the moment that draws us in. So when you think of a focal point, you know, a lot of people think about painting a wall a singular color. It's whatever can draw you in. Oftentimes we don't really use a space the way it was intended or we're not sure what its original intention should be for us, right? We find a, a room somewhere and we're thinking, okay, this is maybe a pass through. How do I use this? It's important to create a drawing and a focal point can do that really well. Do you feel like, uh, like the main room in a home always needs that? Or is that something that you use depending so, on the space or project or client? That's a great question actually. And I think most people assume that each room needs a focal point, but actually most spaces need many focal points. It's an important way for us to experience the space as a whole. So when you are thinking about a space, uh, you should be thinking about it very holistically. Uh, what does it do top to bottom? What does it do left to right? And how can you draw the eye around the space to experience it. If you've got a view, that should be your focal point. What can you make fade away around that to really turn your attention that. there? Okay. Exactly. So it works toward bringing your attention and it can also assist in shifting your, your point of view. I know you have this elaborate process that you go through with your clients to kind of understand who they are yes, and what they want to express. Mm -hmm. So do you go shop that object or how does that whole thing I work? I do, I yeah. do. I will get to know somebody, figure out what their goals are, understand what it is that's missing in their life or what they're trying to accomplish with their space. And my job is ultimately to make them fall in love with their home and find themselves in it. So I will take the time to understand, like I said, where those pain points are and I will concept out a space. And I will concept it out completely down to the last accessory. Now that's not meant for the room to stay static from there on in. Those accessories are meant as pointers, as clues for a homeowner to then continue to experiment and live and bring in, change art and you know change a chair. But now they've got a very complete structure that they can kind of jump off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. we are. We're not in Paris. We're not in New York City. We can be, by design, <laughs> we can. So how do you go, I mean, obviously we have lots of resources here, yes. but there is maybe a little bit of a limitation. So how do you find these unique objects? Well, it takes time. I think time is often underestimated. You know, we should accumulate things uh, because we love them. I'm, I'm very much a believer that uh, don't just buy things to have stuff be thoughtful about it and if you have an impulse for something take a minute and think about why you like that do you want to come back to it um, we have access to the world i just happen to have grown up in on both continents um, and so have that professional access um, because i've experienced it and i have a lot of contacts and my network is there but Anyone these days can reach as far as New Zealand or China, anywhere, if you really are seeking something out. And we've got great local resources. Um, you know, we may not have the sort of typical showroom en masse, right? I mean, a lot of uh, big cities have a design center. We don't necessarily have that. But a good designer can be your expert guide in helping you find those places where you can find things unique to you. Not like what it looks like in a catalog, but what feels like your story, your personality. So when you're choosing for a client, do they tend to be newer objects or do they tend to be found objects? That's a great question. It's always a mix. And the reason it's a mix is because a home should never feel like it was just you know, rolled out. It should feel like it's a process. And the second component there is that it should feel somewhat imperfect. I'm not a big believer that a home should be 
sort of pristine in an untouchable way. I want things to feel like they have a sense of age or their own story or the most used word patina. It's a very important thing, patina. It makes you feel like there's less of a barrier between you and it. So combining new and old allows you to um, also play with your heritage and your sense of nostalgia and weave that all together. I was in a home not too long ago and it was designed by a designer. Mm -hmm. Every object in the home was new and you could tell. And you know how they're making new objects look old? Yes. But you oh could still gosh, yes. feel that it was new. Yes. Well, very perceptive of you that you felt that because you're absolutely and right. You so, will it sense gorgeous, it. It was gorgeous, the yeah. home, but yeah. it just didn't feel right. I feel like you need that old in there. I don't know if it's an energetic thing or what but it, it is, is. But it is. It's kind of like the idea of looks on paper, right? Something looks good, but there has to be depth there. This is where you live. It's where you spend your days crying, where you spend your days when you're not feeling well, when you spend your days, you know, tripping over things or laughing with your children or for the, you know, 10th time trying to solve that math problem. So by virtue, it makes no sense to have things that are all new because life just isn't that way. So it's, it's highly important. I'm, I'm really impressed that you sense that. I think most people would sense it. You just have to be attuned to it. But then on the flip side, I went to Round Top, mm -hmm. which is a furniture um, antique show yes, that we have not far from Austin. That's amazing. <laughs> However, I bought a bunch of these brass candlesticks okay. and then I, I brought them home and put them on my new marble countertop and it just, it didn't feel right either. So there's the flip side of that. Well, I'll tell you, why didn't it feel right? I haven't seen these candlesticks, obviously. You put them on your marble countertop. Did they have an anchor? Did they have something else referential around them? Or are they there in isolation, right? A candlestick They just looked nature... kind of old. Yes. Yeah, I feel like they needed to be shinier to oh, kind of match the environment. I think that can be beautiful. If you maybe find a great tray to give that a little bit of weight, and maybe you make a reference somewhere else in the house mm -hmm. so that it's not on its own, or you maybe make a little, imagine those, visualize all of you, have fun with this, these brass uh, candlesticks that you then add, you know, anchor by a tray and add a whole cocktail bar situation, even as a setup for a, an evening that you're gonna have. You've all of a sudden created ambiance, you've created uh, individualism, and you've got a story to tell, which is so much fun because that's why people are coming over anyway. There was nothing else like that in the environment, so it didn't make sense. Right. But what the trick for that particular thing was just black candlesticks oh, because then it made idea. it feel a little bit more modern yes. and I shined them up a little bit. Yeah. Not perfect, right. but they needed a little bit of shine to them. But that's great. Black candlesticks is very chic. Yeah. Yeah. Really true. Yeah. And again, back to what you were saying about how the candlesticks were all on their own. Right. It needed to be kind of brought through the space. Yes. Which I think is a really... It really, it's a skill that I'm in the process of working on right now, is how to make, how to bring the old into the new mm -hmm. and make them work well together. Um, do you have any tips on that? The fact that you are um, practicing with little objects like this, um, en français we say objet, and it's a little joke around uh, the team because I always say, these are precious little things. That's why I use the, the little French word. If you start there and you build from that, you will gain comfort through that. So it is a little bit of a step-taking process. Um, and it, it, it is trial and error. Not everything will work. You will find that, for example, uh, you try something in an old red lacquer, but it feels way too loud in a totally cream room unless you can really make that more of a, of a a uh, fine art thing. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, but that takes time. That takes time to get there. And it's a good thing to enjoy the process of understanding that. Just have fun. Yeah. Yeah, but I do think that that is a really good tip for anybody out there that maybe did buy a piece that just feels a little too dramatic to, for the room, mm -hmm. but you love it. Yeah. But then you're kind of like in this bad relationship where you kind of hate it because it doesn't make your room look good. But maybe it is this like fun experiment of how can I bring in pieces to like, 
it's the red, the shiny red piece of furniture, and then it's the book on the table with right. the red writing. Yes, yes, Things exactly. Like that. Yes, yeah. yes. So find moments where you can connect the dots. And don't be too formulaic about it again. Have some fun and be a little haphazard. Um, but that, that's exactly right. Says the master, because <laughs> when you're a master, you can be a little loosey-goosey. When you're in the learning process, like I think I am right now, it's it really is this uh, scary, but the discomfort is where the magic happens. Absolutely, always, always. And even though it might be intimidating to you as you get started and you might feel pressure, just hear my voice in your head, I'm happy for it to be me sitting on your shoulder that says, just let shoulders down and relax and enjoy the process. This is about you and only you first and then the other people in your home if you're taking the lead on how you're going to design the space um, or care for it. So you just kind of have to let it go from there and that fun you're having with it, it's contagious, I promise. So just keep my voice there. I love that. Yeah. Just to kind of wrap it all up, yes. if we're gonna have a focal point in the home mm -hmm. or in a room, What's your final takeaway to the... If you're going to have a focal point, uh, find something you love first and think about what that item means to you and where you want people to see it. Is it something that's private to you? Do you want it to stay in your personal space, i.e. your bedroom? Or do you want to share that with somebody else? And that's probably the first place that you should think about experimenting where it might fit. Yes, I love it. It comes down to my hashtag, which is live your dream already. Definitely live your dream already. <laughs> we sure. all deserve yes. to live our dream already. Turnstile right? design, we totally feel that way. It's inherent, so I love that you you do too. It's nice. a really great uh, and important message. Well, it's always a pleasure, Leva. Thank and you, Thank Natasha. you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, super fun. Thanks for coming to our office. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like this video, make sure to subscribe below because we have videos coming out every week on all things Austin, design, and real estate. We'll see you next week, and ciao for now.